الله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله الحمد لله له الأمر من قبل ومن بعد وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله الذي أنزل علينا كتابا نقرأه وأمرا نطيعه وسبيلا نتبعه وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم فلا وربك لا يؤمنون حتى يحكموك فيما شجر بينهم ثم لا يجدوا في أنفسهم حرجا مما قضيت ويسلموا تسليما من يطع الله والرسول فلا مضل له ومن يعص الله والرسول فلا هادي له Brothers and sisters in Islam There's a lot of writing and speaking about the necessity to enhance an Islamic authority and an Islamic system at least within the lands that are historically Muslim lands. The mere fact that a lot of words are spoken and written concerning the necessity of establishing an Islamic system in all the lands of the Muslims indicates that that system is absent in the lands of the Muslims. And it also indicates when we look further and deeper into the ideas of the proponents of the necessity of reinstating Islam, we find that there is no candidness in exposing those people who have made the absence of Islam a fact and a reality of our lives. It goes beyond saying, but nevertheless it serves to break through the barrier of monotony that Allah subhana and the standards of Allah subhana should be the backbone of the Muslims' lives in an organized manner. For Allah did not create us as animals, but He created us with a higher responsibility of obedience. Let us remind ourselves that Allah permeates throughout the very subtle parts of our lives and should have a presence in the more conscious and cognizant parts of our lives. أَفَرَأَيْتُمْ مَا تُمْنُونَ أَأَنْتُمْ تَخْلُقُونَهُ أَمْ نَحْنُ الْخَالِقُونَ نَحْنُ قَدَّرْنَا بَيْنَكُمُ الْمَوْتِ وَمَا نَحْنُ بِمَسْبُوقِينَ 
على أن نبدل أمثالكم وننشئكم في ما لا تعلمون ولقد علمتم النشأة الأولى فلولا تذكرون أفرأيتم ما تحرثون أأنتم تزرعونه أم نحن الزارعون لو نشاء لجعلناه حطاما فظلتم تفكهون إنا لمغرمون بل نحن محرومون أفرأيتم الماء الذي تشربون أأنتم أنزلتموه من المزن أم نحن المنزلون لو نشاء جعلناه أجاجا فلولا تشكرون أفرأيتم النار التي تورون أأنتم أنشأتم شجرتها أم نحن المنشئون With this power and force of Allah working in life and in reality and with the other counter powers of anti-Islam that are trying to thicken the wall of monotony and ambiguity concerning the presence of Allah in our life, we should remind ourselves that we are duty bound to sacrifice and work for the establishment of Allah's order in the realm of our will and our resolution as human beings, as the Khulafa of Allah Subhanahu in this life. والله يحكم لا معقب لحكمه أليس الله بأحكم الحاكمين and to further this fact into our conscious and instill this order into our will we have been given the example and the model and the instructions and the organization that worked when there was the initiative and the confidence to make it work. لقد كان لكم في رسول الله أسوة حسنة لمن كان يرجو الله واليوم الآخر وذكر الله كثيرا and this raja and this wanting of Allah is not wishful thinking it is not lip service a couple of times a week or once a week it is a will that lives with the orders and the commands and the words of Allah subhanah ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَاكَ عَلَى شَرِيعَةٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْرِ فَاتَّبِعْهَا وَلَا تَتَّبِعْ أَهْوَاءَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ أو أَهْوَاءَ الَّذِينَ لَا يَعْقِلُونَ Brothers and sisters in Islam, brothers and sisters in the common objective of establishing Allah's system in this world. During the first days of Islam, the Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, when he went to al Medina to establish, to work out, to materialize, to manifest the theories, the ideas, the concepts of Islam. He worked out a constitution for the inhabitants of al Medina. And the inhabitants of al Medina were 
at that time, al muhajirin and Al-Ansar and Yahud. This was the makeup of al Medina. And was the procedure of the Prophet as naive as to say to the inhabitants of al Medina that our constitution is the Qur'an without any details to the Qur'an? Of course not. He drew details from the Qur'an that constituted what is known historically as the constitution of al Medina. Juxtapose and compare that act of policy, of decision making, by someone who is beyond doubt, beyond questionability, with the present day occupants of Al Medina and the surroundings of Al Medina. They get away with saying to the Muslims that our constitution is the Quran in a very vague sense, without any details, without any instructions drawn directly from the Quran in a constitutional form, but yet they get away with it publicly in the media, among the Muslims, among the non-Muslims, everyone is supposed to overlook the fact that one of the lands in this world that is supposed to be an Islamic land according to the criteria of Islam or according to non-Islamic criteria does not have a constitution. This is repugnant and abominable from an Islamic perspective and yet it is not tolerated and is not accepted from a non-Islamic perspective. But nevertheless, life goes on as usual and the fingers are not pointed at that criminal syndicate in the lands of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that they are enacting laws that are contrary and counter and anti-Islamic and they are getting away with it within the Muslim realm and outside of the Muslim realm. Today, in this season, when people ready themselves the Muslim obligation of Al-Hajj and they seek to go and perform and discharge this individual and collective duty. They are confronted with this regime in the Arabian Peninsula that enhances rules and regulations that gives the Muslim or even someone who may not be Muslim the impression if they consider Mecca and Medina as if it is their backyard they permit whomever they want to go within a time frame and then they forbid whomever they want to go outside of that time frame. Well, if their excuse is that they do not have the capability or the resources, which is a lie because they have many resources, if they don't have that to administer and facilitate the will and the intentions of the Muslims to perform their Hajj, then why don't they have this responsibility of Al-Haramayn, of Mecca and Medina 
to the other Muslims in this world or develop a council or a committee in an intra-Islamic fashion where the Muslims themselves will take upon themselves the responsibility of seeing to it that the largest amount of Muslims who have met the qualifications of performing Al-Hajj may and can come to Al-Hajj whenever they can. But what do they do? They say no to some Muslims. And they put time into a bracket. And they stipulate financial as well as other conditions upon the Muslims. And there is not a person to expose these acts that are undermining one of the pillars of Islam at least. In history, more than 50 years ago, when this regime in the Arabian Peninsula was being formulated, under the close eye and supervision of the British Kafirs and Mushriks, there was a power struggle inside the peninsula, and there was an alliance with two camps or blocks against another two camps and two blocks. There was this Ibn Saud who allied himself with Mubarak ibn Sabah, who was in Kuwait, against who is called a Sharif Hussein ibn Ali, plus ibn Rashid. The latter two did not want in the beginning to take a position against the cent central authority of the Muslims that was fighting against the Kafirs and the Mushriks from Istanbul. And the first two, Ibn Saud and Ibn Sabah, they were the quizlings of the British Kafirs and enemies of Islam. And as the months passed by, they convinced Al Hussein ibn Ali to move and shift his position and join the British camp against the Muslims and the Arabs in the peninsula and outside of the peninsula. One of the issues that made him budge against the Islamic central authority and take the side of Ibn Saud was that he had forbidden the Muslims or certain Muslims from performing Al-Hajj. He had restricted them. And this Ibn Saud took advantage of this restriction and came out publicly to tell the rest of the Muslims that he does not have the right to forbid Muslims from coming to Mecca and performing the Hajj. And as a matter of publicity and advertisement for his power base, Ibn Saud opened the issue that Mecca and then Medina should be administered by a council of Muslims from all over the Islamic Ummah. And it is known at that time that Rashid Rida and Al-Hajj Amin Al-Husayni and other Islamic dignitaries and religious personalities came to Mecca to endorse and to agree and to work further on developing such a committee or council among the Muslims.
but once Ibn Saud managed to score a political and then a military defeat against his adversary, Sharif Hussain, with the help of Ibn Sabah, and then defeated Ibn Rashid in a Riyadh, then he went back, he rescinded his suggestion, and he joined Mecca and the Medina to his domain. This order, or this frame of mind, upon which he gained popularity, and through the supervision of a Kim or a John Philby, who, after three years between 1927 and 1930, Ibn Saud tried to convince him to become a Muslim. It took him three years to convince the Mushrik to become a Muslim, to be acceptable to his power base who were called Al-Ikhwan at the time because they could not tolerate the presence of a Mushrik or a Kafir beside their supreme leader, Ibn Saud. This person, this Philby, has procreated in the thousands, even in the tens of thousands, who are administering the policies of this land today without even having a written constitution extracted from the Qur'an and from the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and there are blind eyes towards this fact. Further yet, the cunning of the enemies of Islam in the public media want us to feel an affinity with this clique in the Arabian Peninsula when they try to denounce them in public. So we hear the imperialists at times, or the Zionists many times, leveling criticism, which is not authentic criticism, but it is media criticism to make the Muslims feel an affinity with those who are ruling in the Arabian Peninsula. And we should not be deceived by this criticism or by the media or by the support that is latent and that is manifest that it has from the kuffar, from the CIA, from the United States, from the Zionists. Is it by coincidence that the regime that is occupying Palestine tells the Muslims, anyone who is under 35 years of age and lives in the occupied lands prior to 1967 is not permitted to go to Al Hajj. And he, these are the kuffar telling the Muslims, and see how the kuffar and the Muslims, quote unquote, in the Arabian Peninsula, interlock in their policies to try to defeat the freedom loving and the obedient spirit and conscience of the Muslims. Then they tell those who are in occupied Palestine, if you have performed Al Hajj before, you are not permitted to perform it now, or this year, or the coming year, and this can go on. And who knows, and who is aware, and who is privy to the other decisions and the other policies that are enacted anywhere between the outright Zionist enmity towards Islam and the most hypocritical and camouflaged enmity towards Islam represented by the house of Al Saud in the Arabian Peninsula what all these other establishments and regimes and administrations what kind of obstacles they put in front of the Muslims to deny them access to perform one of the pillars of Islam and who is interfering 
in religion. There's supposed to be a separation between politics and between religions or between church and state as it is said. But why are they, the politicians, the diplomats, the governments, the heads of state, their foreign ministries, their religious setups, why are they interfering? the religious affairs of the Muslims. They want us to separate. They want us to divide what is religion from what is politics. But when they come and do it, we are not supposed to identify it. And when we identify it, we are not supposed to speak about it. And when we speak about it, we are not supposed to do anything about it. And if we do anything about it, it should not be successful. This is the mind. It is not the featherheads of Arabia who are planning a worldwide strategy against Islam. These are computers. These are worldwide interlocking organizations and associations and governments that are in a war even against the performance of Hajj, which is supposed to be, at least according to their terminology and definition, a ritual part of Islam. Brothers and sisters, if we manage to understand this, and if we are content with understanding it alone, without doing anything about it, we will be responsible, and we are more to blame than those who do not know about it, and who do not know, do anything about it because they lack the knowledge, and they lack the information. Wallahu subhanahu wa ta'ala yahdi ila sawa'i sabeel wa rasoolu alayhi salatu wa salamu yaqool addu'a'u mukhu al-ibadah ud'u'u subhanah wa antum ala yaqeen bil-ijaba wa staghfiru'u innahu kana ghaffara wa la taqnatu min rahmatillah inna allah yaghfiru al-dhunub jami'a Aba وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا المصطفى وعلى آله وصحبه أولي النهى والتقى Brothers and sisters in Islam Allah subhanah Who has explained to us the meanings of Islam the Qur'an and the decisions and the plans and the objectives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in an ayah that is repeated by thousands of Muslims وَأَذَانٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ إِلَى النَّاسِ يَوْمَ الْحَجِّ الْأَكْبَرِ أَنَّ اللَّهَ بَرِيءٌ مِّنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ وَرَسُولُهُ This cutting, this severing of ties between the Muslims the power centers of shirk was announced publicly a political an economic and a far-reaching decision was to be pronounced in front of the Muslims where and when on the day of Hajj precincts of the Haram, in the presence of the multitudes of Muslims, أَنَّ اللَّهَ بَرِيءٌ مِّنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ وَرَسُولُهُ This breaking of ties and severing of diplomatic, if you will, and economic relations
relationships with the mushrikeen was announced in the Hajj. This political decision, if we were in the climate of today's politics, political decision, if we were in the climate of today's politics and in the atmospherics of today's diplomacy, if we were to think of an act of such magnitude in the Hajj, then we are accused of argumentation in the Hajj. The Muslims are accused of bringing controversial issues into the Hajj. What is controversial about Allah's order to the Muslims to sever any type of political or economic reliance upon the blacks and the forces and the governments of shirk? What is political and what is abominable about interpreting and understanding the ayah, this particular ayah, within the context of today. But it is not that the Muslims are wrong in understanding the ayah. It is that the counter-Muslims, the anti-Muslims, do not want al-Hajj to have its impact and its potential to activate and agitate the wills of the Muslims combined to defeat the forces of shirk and the forces of kufr and the first initiative to defeat these forces is to abrogate these relations especially when these relations are so intimate as they exist today between the administration of the shaitan al-akbar in this land and the small demon that administers al-haramain in Mecca and in Medina. They know that this ayah is cutting at their relationships. They know this ayah is exposing their policies. They know this ayah means that the Muslims will and shall, relying upon Allah, identify their criminal decisions on an individual and on a collective level. And the will of the Muslims shall overcome and the Muslims will be victorious for we are only in the beginning of the process and one year after the other the Hajj will gain momentum and the Muslims will become independent for the key word in this area is independence وَلَوْ كَيْهَ الْمُشْرِكُونَ وَلَوْ كَيْهَ الْكَافِرُونَ وَلَوْ كَيْهَ الْمُنَافِقُونَ ربنا أفرغ علينا صبرا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا حبب إلينا الشهادة وزينها في قلوبنا اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه ولا تجعله ملتبسا علينا واجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا افتح بيننا وبين قومنا بالحق وأنت خير الفاتحين اللهم انصرنا بالحق وانصر الحق بنا ربنا لا تجعلنا فتنة للذين كفروا ربنا لا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا اللهم بك نحاول وبك نساول وبك نقاتل وصل اللهم على محمد وآل محمد وبارك اللهم على محمد وآل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم وبارك اللهم على إبراهيم وآل 
آل ابراہیم فی العالمین انکا حمید مجید والعصر ان الانسان لفی خسر الا الذین آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواسوا بالحق جهرا وعلانية وتواسوا بالصبر جهرا وعلانية واقم الصلاة إن الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتابا مركوتا